Um, so we don't have too much today, which should be quick. And Richard Haas said he was hoping to attend, even just as an observer. Yeah. So um, I don't see him here, and, and I, it's I practical to not start with 1420 to give him that opportunity. Sure. Uh, I assume he's still coming as of late yesterday, but I don't. I spoke to him this morning, um, so, and I don't know if he's coming, um, but I did speak to him a little bit this morning and it didn't indicate to him he's coming, I'm not sure. But that's fine, let's let's go out of order on that. Yeah. Um, so let's start with 1230, which is the public participation in uh, board meetings. Uh, did I give, did I give you uh, okay. I think I gave it to you. Okay. Do so, you have it there? No. Did I give it to you? No. Okay, I have one I've worked on. Um, and this is the one that uh, Paul had raised a concern saying that, because uh, we had the first reading, and Paul had a concern uh, about public comment. Are, are we then extending uh, that there can be public comment at work sessions? Um, so we looked into that, and then on the advice of council, uh, we were told that uh, we could enact a policy for work sessions, and that's the other policy that we'll be looking at today. So they, they sort of go hand in hand. Um, I'm comfortable with 12:30. Um, I'm, I'm comfortable that Paul's concerns have been addressed if we enact 23:15. I think that the 12:30 language, his concern was, well, what about? work sessions. Because it was silent on work sessions. Right, it was silent on work sessions. So I don't really see a need to do anything different to 1230 unless uh, everyone else does. Well, I think it should reference um, 23, so maybe we have to do 2315 first in order to be able to reference it with 1230. Okay, well let's, let's go backwards. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, it's kind of jumped over. It's, yeah. I mean, they think it's I agree. kind of a chicken egg sort of thing. I, uh, I apologize. I don't have a copy of 2315 on my either. printer. Was not uh, I must have something in My there. printer was busted. And, and even busted. within 2315, there was an option. Mm -hmm. Language from. Yeah. So 2315 is board work sessions. Uh, did anyone have any? Thing that they wanted to. Could I make a copy of that? Do I sure. have it? I'm sorry. I don't have a copy of that. Anybody else need a copy? Did anyone have anything that they wanted to alter in 2013? Well, as it came over from Mr. Feldman, it was there was a possibility of there could be no no public comments during board work sessions. Or he provided a sec alternative language of um, you could add in the alternative, except at the discretion of the board president. So in terms of drafting it, it's right now I don't know which which okay. is the draft. What uh, what's, I, I, what's your feeling? I think sure. I think it's important that we be consistent. So the public has the opportunity to comment, and we'll I guess in the future have the opportunity to comment once we finish the board participation. Um, policy to comment before the board votes on anything and after the board votes on anything, on any business. So the this policy would allow the board subcommittee members and if we have a workshop session or if we have a retreat to work on what we have to work on. And then the public has the opportunity to make comments at the board meeting, because mm -hmm. we don't, we will yeah. not be doing any business at the work sessions, and if we do, then it becomes a board meeting, and then the comment has the, the public has the opportunity to. Yeah, yeah. I think that um, I, I just uh, I can't remove myself from being an attorney, but I I don't love the discretion line here because 
Uh, and I had a discussion, I think Eric actually raised it, and the discussion I had with Eric was, um, if I, my family, if, if, if you say, okay, I'm going to let public person talk at one, and you say I'm not, uh, you know, facilities, yes, and legislative, no, then we're sort of uh, leaving ourselves open to, you know, we're picking and choosing based on speech and uh, the whole thing. We said topic. yes in December and we said no in January, the whole maybe thing, for a good reason. Right, and the whole thing, I, I just don't want to leave us uh, exposed like that. Yeah. I, I think there's a consistency piece and, a, and an efficiency piece. M many times through the years, we've taken the work sessions and put them up right before a Board of Education meeting, and so time was really precious. So you had 60 minutes, and during that 60 minutes, we know we need to do X. Um, um, losing that, yeah. oh, that just, just, I, mean, I think the, the consistency piece is the most important, but that efficiency, ability to get prescribed work done in what's limited time for. Uh, to get Board of Education members together after as busy as everybody is. I, I also think the reality of the situation is if there is a board work session and, you know, it ends at 10 o'clock, it's over, we all get up, I think every one of us end up going over to whoever we see in the audience <laughs> that we're friends with or not friends with or whatever it is, and we end up talking to them individually anyway, so there's an opportunity to sort of communicate there. I mean, we're not required to, but I think, uh, I think we used to do that. Um, and I think we would want to do that because I don't think any of us are trying to uh, run out of here any of these meetings and not speak to somebody as a concern. Um, to me, I'm, I'm more comfortable taking this out, taking out the board president in, her discre in his or okay. her discretion for one other reason I think Betty referenced it is that we're amending 1230, or excuse me, we're enacting 1230, hopefully, and what that would do is allow um, comment before we vote. That's a big gain, I think. So right now, and it came up at the last board meeting, where someone said, I want to talk about something, and they were told, well, you can only comment at the presentation. I'm thinking to myself, well, not much longer, hopefully. A couple of months. So I think when we present this to the board, if there is any uh, pushback on that change, I think this is a good reason um, why. Uh, Perfect. OK. Um, just in the conversation, um, it sounded like we're taking the 2315 and also applying it to committee meetings. Should we or shouldn't we be? I think at one point I, I recall our council saying maybe we should have something similar to 2315 for committee meetings because they're yeah. not the same. Even if that's a 23, I don't even know if it exists you know, throughout district, but if it was a 2315.1 speaking specifically to committees, mm -hmm. I think then we're just being very, what's a committee meeting, what's a work session, yeah. what's a board meeting, being as clear as we can for ourselves and for the community. I, I agree, because I think there was a lot of confusion for me before being on the board as to what these committee meetings are mm -hmm. and yeah, what they're about. The definitions about. of each one really is. Yeah. So I could ask Mr. Feldman if he could propose some language for a, com a committee. Okay, yeah, I, I think so, and if maybe we make it 2315A or yes. something like yeah. that. Um, I would think it, it will model, I would think it would model the board work session, one that we're looking at right here, um, except maybe just define what a, a committee meeting is. Um, Number of participants, that sort of, like, it just be very clear. Yes. Okay. Um, so that way we're addressing the situation of, here's a committee meeting, here's a work session, here's a board meeting, and I was on the... I think it was the Syosset website I was on uh, the other day, and their Board of Ed page had s sort of s explained some of this stuff. Actually, right? Comac, that? Comac. Comac? Okay, yeah, somebody Comac too. I think I was on Syosset. Comac has, like on their Board of Ed page, a specific reference to the definition of each one of those sessions. What a work session is, what a, a public meeting is, what um, a committee meeting is, and they specifically let everybody know. I think we talked about that maybe two meetings ago, yeah. too, that once all these policies are final, then we turn them into something, uh, um, this yeah, that's topic. a little, not, yeah. not, even the, the, not even the policy piece, but kind of a, without having to read multiple pages of policy, kind of a snapshot, plain language, right. quick resource. Yes. Yeah, I, I'd like that, I think, because that, that would be helpful, um, you know, even if it's just to say, all right, when you come to a board meeting, you know, here's our general rules, like that kind of stuff, and maybe that will help someone who 
because um, in the few months I've been doing this, I've seen some new faces Hello. at the board meetings uh, speaking, and, and those people, I would imagine, you know, uh, would be looking for some insight. Right. And that's talk. exactly why um, you know, I had recommended at the first board meeting for, or to let everybody know what we're doing on our devices so people yes. didn't think that we weren't, you know, we were looking at SharePoint, which everybody didn't really yeah. know in mm -hmm. the beginning. So, um, uh, yeah. Adam, what sure. about um, board retreats? Should we have a separate policy for board retreats? I don't Adam? even know what I, board retreat I would is think because I haven't been on one. But retreat? is the board retreat a work session? It is open to the public. The board retreat is. Mm -hmm. I thought like some people. This just came to my mind. Aren't some board retreats like away from the district? If it's away from the district, then yeah. it's away from the district. Right. But if it's here. Yeah. Then okay, yeah, maybe point. we should ask Jack what he thinks on that as well and, and get some guidance on that. Okay. Well, that's good. Yeah. Um, get some notes. Because even in the, um, one of the, the um, workshops I attended at NISBA, it was all about like the open meeting laws and they explained all of that. Yeah, I went to the same one. Yeah. So I have that paperwork too that I could share. Mm -hmm. So I'm just making some notes. Okay, so then on 2315, I think we are just going to take out the unless permitted by board president in his or her discretion. We just cut it at sessions. Uh, other than no that, public comment periods yeah. during board work sessions. Okay. Other than that, I'm comfortable with it. Um, now, Jill, you raised your hand. You're sitting in the back, not on camera. The first couple of meetings of this committee, since I've been the chair, I've allowed members of the public to speak. I think we're changing that, uh, likely, if we uh, continue down this road, but I want to be fair and continue. Did you have something you wanted to add on this? Oh, I just had a question on on the policy for public um, board meetings. Okay, so wait, hang on one second, we'll get back to that one. All right, so 2315, I think we're all good? Okay. Okay. All right, so 2315 is good. Now we're going to 1230. And I... Again, my printer wasn't working this morning, uh, and I'd love to say I didn't know about it, but I've just been too cheap to uh, get a new one lately. Do you have the, an updated one? I just have mine with the notes on it. Let me see. Uh, okay, I'll look on the stuff. Thank you. You sure? Yep. I think so. then all we would have to do to for the work we had done prior and to comply with uh, Dr. Peller's request and Mr. Feldman's recommendations is at the end of the first paragraph after it says but not on the agenda place mm -hmm. that there shall be no public comments no public comment periods during board work sessions see policy and then at the end mm -hmm. cross-reference policy 2315 and then yep I, I don't think we have to do anything else I, think be well, good. I, I had a suggestion okay. Okay. um and actually it would be to the end of the policy okay. where you have the videotaping statement yes. that Eric reads at every meeting. Mm -hmm. I think because they have been uh, taped meetings that have been posted on websites with individual commentary, that the community should be aware of that as well. And perhaps we should add at the end of that uh, at the end of the policy and maybe use for political or personal purposes as the individual taking the meetings. <laughs> My attorney. Hat. I don't know if Jack would say that's going to fly, but I can't get into that. That will be just from Jack. That's from Jack? Mm -hmm. I, I respect Jack. I think he's great. I, I, I don't like that language. Um, what is the need for that, that language? And I don't know. I haven't spoken about it with Jack. Because portions of board meetings have been mm -hmm. posted sure. on websites with individual commentary. So if something is posted, and somebody writes, hey, that's terrible, or hey, that's great, that's not or, what I'm saying. then I'm not following. Maybe that's the why I'm not. Okay. tape is being posted, and there is commentary specific to what's being taped. Can by the you, person taping or again? by the public? By the person taping. Can you read it again? I'm sorry. I, I didn't have any um, The this. last sentence, 
in the sentence says, persons addressing the board are advised that a public school board oh, that part I have. I mean, the is part, subject to being yeah. taped and thus that any comments, questions, or statements made during the public participation portions of the meeting may appear in print or online, including YouTube or other websites, right. and may be used for political or personal purposes as the individual taping the meeting sees fit. Why do we, what's the reason for adding the extra language? Like what wasn't covered with the current language that we've been reading for over a year and a half, I think? Because if the material that's being posted mm -hmm. is being altered. Altered? Oh, somebody's been altering it. So in other words, if there is, if, if you're not just showing the video, but you're saying, okay, this, you're making comments at before and after, you're taking pieces of meeting. So if somebody's making like a political ad where it's like, Eddie D. Sabato doesn't like children, and then you take like a snippet of like a video and then like yes. that. I don't love it, uh, but I trust our council. If our council thinks that that language is is better than the language he came up with, I'm presuming he came up with that other language. It's in addition to. No, no, I'm saying, but the original statement, like we all know, that's written by a lawyer. I don't think that uh, that, that was was generated uh, by a board member. I don't mean that disrespectfully. I mean that's what we pay Jack for. Uh, so if Jack's think if Jack thinks that that needs an update. Um, then I can live with that. I'm just not I just don't love the, the last words as, as they see fit. Yeah, like, I, I just don't like that part of it. Like the, the, the thrust of it I get, I just don't love the idea. Like to me it's like discouraging people from talking at, video, at, at, at meetings. Like if it's, no, that, it's like, you, you it's like it might be on YouTube, it might be this, it might be that, and they might do this to you, and they might do that. Like, I don't know. Anyone I need attending, to see it, anyone right? attending the meeting? I'm gonna write it down. I'm better visual Adam, than listening. Anyone attending the meeting should know that the meeting is being taped sure. and that that tape could be used for other purposes other than informing the community. Okay. I'm just writing it down because I'm uh, much better meeting. looking at something than listening. Imagine if we're, what we're talking about, and I gave that example, and like Betty Spado right. doesn't like children, and, and that then, is used okay. actually and, in a and, campaign. And may be used like for political, be, I'm taking political or personal purposes as individual taking the meeting sees fit. Sees fit. Okay. Let's Patrick, what do you think? I, I think I think the whole paragraph is just about notice and and when you think about someone, like you said, who maybe is coming to their first Board of Education meeting, and you know there have been times, not so much recently, where people have really come up, um, really seeking the board's help, really sometimes emotional about the issue that they're holding. The fact that it's being videoed and could potentially be shown again, um, yeah, I think they do at least have that, that right to know. Does, since we've been reading a statement, I, I don't think we've seen any decrease in public participation that it's discouraging folks from speaking. And I haven't seen any alterations. Uh, I've probably spent too much time on, on social media, but uh, I, I don't, uh, I haven't seen any alterations. I haven't seen any because I, yeah. I don't look at okay. it. Okay, I, I look, I haven't seen, have you guys seen I've any seen, alterations? I've just seen like a clip, you know, being, but not yeah. really. Yeah, right. right, and I've seen comments. That's an alteration when you, you're not showing the whole board meeting, you're showing, a, you're making a statement, you're showing a clip, you're going back to another board meeting, that's altering. No, no I apologize, what I meant is I've never seen anyone, uh, what, from what I've seen, I've never seen anyone somehow altering the words that were said, somehow or taking, altering, it, out of or taking it out of context. It's 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 ne I've seen it where it's Once not been you a give two. Once you a snippet, you take it out of context. I don't know if we're t let's say we talking about. Uh, I, one I thing understand a, a complete distortion where yeah. you're making me say something That's I didn't say. But if, if if I if we are having this conversation over the period of two hours mm -hmm. and someone takes one comment that I make in 30 seconds and make that the summation of the meeting, it's, you, you certainly, if okay. you're not out of context, you lose context. Right, okay. I can live with it then. Um, 
And, and, and I think that Look, may my, be my, to where we're ultimately heading, which is a Board of Education slash district uh, sponsored complete and accurate start to ending account of a, the meeting. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think yeah. that would be helpful and also maybe some sort of thing like, um, let's say we have the agenda. So we have today's agenda and it was videotaped. And we can say this point one starts at, you know, five seconds in. Point two starts at 24 minutes in. So that way someone can say, you know what, I don't want to watch a two-hour meeting. I only care about this next to our post, uh, whatever we, I keep using the word post, but next to wherever we would ultimately put it, you can go 22 minutes it, in. It's time stamps on it to let people know right. where to, okay. to search it. So that, then so I'll 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 add, add with that, that language. That last half sentence. Okay, so what will happen now with 12.30, because we altered it, and actually even if we didn't alter it, yep. because we have a break in the month, it will be a first reading. Okay. So, we're, so we, we do have time again to uh, give the, the whole board an opportunity. So both for 12.30 and 23.15 will be first readings on December 14th. Okay. And, and just to make, maybe clarify a little bit for my own sake, um, my uncomfortableness about adding that additional sentence, I think it was sort of because I've always been I've never been thrilled with that paragraph being reiterated over and over and over again. So my initial reaction on adding anything to it is, why? Uh, and I think I'm inclined not to just off the bat. But upon speaking with it, you guys, I'm fine with it. Um, OK, so then I think we are good with 1230. I think we're good with 21, 2315. Now on to 1420. Um, so in 1420, um, Rich Haas had some pretty serious concerns with uh, the draft policy. Question, Adam uh, and Patrick. You sent us a summary of what the different policies, when they're presented by NISBA, that they're oh, categorized the required the versus me. local. Yeah. Okay. Can you talk to me about this part? Is it's this local? It's, it's a local. Not a required by law policy. It's local. So the, then, the, the curriculum one. Yeah. You know, it's funny. I, 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 I sort of addressed this when I spoke to, to Rich, that this is not a required policy. This, uh, right? this is just one that's the recommended ones. Mm -hmm. and, and here was, I, I, had, I had explained it, and I want to sort of talk it through here, because here's how I always, no, here's how I viewed this policy when we were reviewing it. If a parent objects to some text that they would feel Look, they're gonna they're gonna call somebody, and I thought to be fair to our administration, and um, also to let the parent know here's what you do, here's the process. I didn't view it as like I, I thought know. the position paper, and yeah. what else to call it, submitted by the teachers association, um, did not fairly characterize the board of education or the policy. Committee. Yeah. Um, one in that it says it, it closes by we represent the teachers and the students, which education doesn't represent the students, which I believe to be wholly false. Um, but also that it was the intention of this policy to take away um, the prerogative of administrators and teachers. And at the last committee meeting, that was act actively spoken out in the opposite when Mrs. Lisabato voiced, you know, we pay folks to make these decisions and the committee agreed. Mm -hmm. And lastly, no one sat there two months ago saying that we're doing this to censor books, that we're trying to have non-controversial topics. It was all about, you know, again, my interpretation of the policy as well as the discussion that the, the committee had was, what do we do when? Yes, that, yes. and that and that's what, what does a parent do? What do we do? Um, 
you know, I, so I thought, I, I don't think they're, you know, short of the idea that, you know, there's a group here that represents kids and a group that doesn't, I don't think a lot of what was written in that the position paper by the teachers would go against anything we would say. It, you know, in fact, it might be something we would use to make a determination about a yeah, I, I, policy. I agree. Um, I, I didn't, and, and I... I but, it's ironically a lot like that statement. Is that statement there to notify people or potentially could it discourage someone from speaking? Would a policy such as this, is it there to encourage, just give people information on how to proceed if they have a concern? Or does it encourage people to complain? It's almost that same sort of feel, which probably is in a lot of our policy language, you know, when we have a policy on sexual harassment, it's not because we think we're sexually harassing people, but folks need an avenue. Sure. Mm -hmm. And that, that's how I viewed it. I, I said, okay, you know, look, I know with the last few months I've been contacted a few times just as a friend, not a board member, saying, oh, well, you know, so my kids are reading this and that. And, and my stance on what's, what, you know, what can and should be talked about is different than a lot of people. So I'm not trying to interject that in any individual situation. Um, I think it's helpful for everyone, like you're saying, for the parents to know what to do. Um, so I think your uh, analogy is perfect with sexual harassment. You know, we don't think it's happening. We don't want it to happen. But here, if somebody thinks it's happening, here's what they should do. Um, if we don't have a policy, then what do we do? Well, well, I, then it's we we've survived without it. I agree. In much in much the same way, it, it <coughs> usually will follow the natural course of things, where it goes from the the teacher to a, the a department chair. Um, you know, most times though, this particular issue ends at either Mr. O'Farrell or Mrs. Retaliata's sure. desk, uh, and they would work it out in that way. Um, the, the, I mean, the policy. Do you feel we need one, uh, or, or no. not? Do, do you think? I, I get it. It's working without it. But yeah. do you feel it's beneficial to have one? I'm not trying to put you on the spot. Yeah, I don't. I, I think it's working fine without it. Um, it does provide a, you know, it, it, in a sense, it, it's interesting. I, I have a, a little bit of different take on it than, than the teacher side of it, um, especially as we altered it from the New York State School Board's initial recommendation, which was kind of fast tracked to the Board of Ed. I meet a teacher and the principal, I go to the superintendent, yes. I'm at the board of ed. Yes. Like, whoa, wait a second, what about all these other other folks? So it, it, it would prevent someone who doesn't like a particular text or curriculum material on a, on a Friday showing up Monday at a board meeting and seeking... Now, we would do what we typically do, which is encourage the, the normal chain of communication, um, but this, this outlines it. Um, could it, by, by having something in our policy called complaints about, could that encourage someone to potentially play it all the way through? You could. Yeah, you know, it's, uh, you know, so I, I don't want to dismiss that point in, entirely by giving a roadmap to, to take your complaint all the way that someone could do it. Um, do I think the, that the structure in place with coordinators, directors, assistant superintendents for instruction, handles this sort of thing routinely, effectively for the district? Yeah, I, I think they do. And, and you know, the, 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 what the alterations we made, one of the things was, um, you, know, you and the other administrators had strongly said, we don't, you know, the parent representative uh, wasn't a good idea. Uh, I, I'm, I'm, I'm not characterizing it well, but that was one of the recommendations, was have this committee from the school board associations, have this committee and have a, a librarian, a parent, this, that, and we said that, that doesn't work for us, We're, you know, and we altered it. And I think that was teacher friendly, that alteration. Um, I think Rich was saying that um, something about an alternative text, and that was his biggest um, bone of contention with this. Well, we could look at that language. That wasn't in the original language, but I could tell you from the curriculum folks... Is that in 1420 that, or 1420R? That would be in 1420R. Yeah. That is something that has been a very successful resolution where, where it was appropriate. 
it, I believe his, his position paper interpreted that as anytime someone doesn't like what they are reading, they have a right to an alternate text. Um, and that wasn't the case, but in many instances, it, it was a way to, um, to decree where a teacher and administrator felt, yeah, this could be done in another way. Respectful of that, you know, parents' wishes, they were able to just do it. And but that could be done without a policy in place. Being done now. Okay. Yeah. Uh, there it is. We're just yeah, talking. Being about done it. now. So so. Um, yes. Yeah. Rich, we've uh, we're just talking okay. about policy fourteen twenty. Feel free to speak because we're talking about you. Um, and. I sort of was touching on that, that you and I had spoken, and Patrick was saying you and he had spoken, and uh, we were sort of talking about the purpose that, that we had seen and the benefits. I mean, it's not very strong language, but the policy could certainly stand without it if it was the board's wish to have the policy, you know, where it says, in some cases, it may be appropriate, and that's, it's not very strong language yeah, and to I consider an alternative text for an individual student. You could still propose that resolution without it being written like that in the policy. I, I would think also, if it says in some cases it may be appropriate to consider an alternative tax for an individual student, then if a parent's unhappy, they're always going to point the finger to that sentence and say, well, you can do it, you just don't want to do it. Mm -hmm. And then I think, I, I don't know if we're, if, if yeah. I, I see the concern on that sentence. I mean, you're still, it's still an available remedy eventually. Absolutely. Um, I believe, you know, part of the, the rationale for that, just to take the other mm -hmm. side, and like I said, just, I'm just not strongly in favor of you know, what we're doing here, um, it's, in my particular situation, in my particular family, with my child at this particular time, we, we need a different text. I could do that without saying the other 800 eighth graders who may have been using this text need to be in, impacted at all. Right. But I, I wonder if by putting that language expressly in there, are we encouraging every single time there is a... So I don't like this because it makes a reference so to... So it's not there, it becomes our proposed solution rather than theirs? <laughs> yes. Okay. Yes. So yeah. I don't like a book on... I'm going to pick every controversial topic and think Muslims, uh, anti-Semitism... homosexuality, abortion, pick any hot topic you want, and, and, and somebody says, well, give me alternative text. You have it in your policy, you're allowed to do it, you just don't want to do it. I'd be more comfortable with taking, uh, and those four references I used were because those are four references I received from, um, from people. Um, let's take, I'd be comfortable taking out that entire sentence. Okay. I don't know what anyone else feels. I, you could take it out and still keep it as a teacher or administrator remedy when the issue arises. You, you, wouldn't, you wouldn't need it in policy to be able to, right. to work through it. I mean, it's, it's been done. It's working. You do now. Um, Rich, you missed my speech earlier about the public may not be able to speak in the future, but at least as of today. We, we still take public discussion. Um, would you, uh, you know, it sounds like the committee's recommendation is to take out that sentence, and, and we've given consideration to everything you've told us uh, in writing and, and the oral discussions you've had. What do you think about that? Uh, I think that in looking at the policy the first time, and thank you for the opportunity to speak here, um, that was one of the things that immediately everybody who saw it thought it was going to do really a little more than open Pandora's box towards people kind of circumventing curriculum. And I, I think that's probably the most problematic line in the policy. So I, I do appreciate that you guys are moving away from that. I think it's the right decision for, for you also in terms of being able to manage the district. Um, yeah, I think that there are a lot, of, uh, it, a lot of different versions of 1420 out there that I've seen that, uh, that really do a lot to support the role of the, the administration, the Board of Education, and the teachers in selecting curriculum. And I'd love to see, you know, in future versions of the policy as it's continually discussed, you know, some of that language find its way into this as well.
I'm not sure. I, I'm not sure what I missed before I got here. No, so no. It, I apologize. Really, we've just been talking about why we wanted, why we thought this suggested policy from the school board association was a good idea. Um, what we hoped to gain out of having it, which was to uh, provide, you know, like uh, Patrick had a great example that you know we have a sexual harassment policy in place, not because we think it's occurring or uh, are trying to encourage it to occur, or, uh, but you know if it happens or someone thinks it's happening, we need a procedure in place, and a policy in place, and we are saying the same thing. If there's a complaint about curriculum, um, and I would imagine that's what the school board association's rationale is as well. Um, I think as long as a policy doesn't, uh, you know, a sexual harassment policy does not, in its adoption, undermine a, right, a person's right not to be sexually harassed, obviously. But uh, one of the concerns with this is that it kind of undermine, uh, a, as long as the policy that's adopted is there to really kind of create a vehicle through which people can communicate concerns without simultaneously undermining the role of educators in determining curriculum and the role of uh, a strong program of cu curriculum and assessment and the role that plays in a class where all the kids are learning together. Uh, as long as the policy, I think that would be the one potential difference um, if we weren't mindful of how the policy was enacted. Okay. So. okay. And, and just so you hear it from me, um, I had certain concerns that I think in, in your position paper misconstrued the, the Board of Education and the Policy Committee's goals. When we sat and discussed this policy, it was not to limit text. Mm -hmm. It was not to have censorship. It was not that the Board of, someone other than the Board of Education needed to represent the students. It was clearly about if someone has a certain concern, what is what is the avenue? And I, I so in in reviewing the position paper you submitted to, to the committee, I think you'd have almost complete agreement around the ideas of censorship and why text and why reading. And it was never this Board of Education committees nor right. board's intention to be censors of uh, and and I, I think I did, and it's first, it's funny because, and I appreciate your, your candor, because at first my reaction was, oh my God, the Board of Ed Education wants to start censoring text. But I even had to take a step back. And I, I think that the, the positions we submitted were less about uh, that. And I recognize the Board has rights and responsibilities in engaging in curriculum discussions. But uh, to take a step back and say this isn't really about, you know, whether or not we're worried that the board is going to censor things, but whether or not we want to open the door towards individuals thinking they have the right to start taking censorship roles over curriculum. So, and I do, I do really uh, respect that. I think that this was definitely something that was probably done for, for all the right reasons. And it was just really some, some of our concerns. Like we thought that the best intentions sometimes can, you know, we were worried that it might create a bigger problem than it's solving, which is why we really yeah. wanted to discuss it. I can just, I, as chair, I don't think you were in the room yet, that I, you know, I've been contacted several times uh, just this year with people saying that, that they didn't like certain materials because they felt they were biased against one religion or another, or, and, and, and again, I don't inject my personal viewpoints on any of that stuff. Um, I pass it along. But what am I passing along, and how is it going to be handled? Because as a board, we also want to make sure that things are going to be handled uh, in the same manner, you know, consistently. That uh, you know, I may know who to call, or a year ago, I may know have known who to call. Someone else may not know who to call. I may know I can go to this building. Many parents may not know this building even exists. Um, so it's really just to sort of make things clear. Um, it's absolutely not to um, push any agenda of uh, taking controversial literature and saying we don't need it in our schools. I, I, I don't, uh, I'm not trying to push that. So I, I think by deleting that sentence, which is the trigger, I think, for a lot of your concerns, which uh, I think that will, I, I'm comfortable at, of, of doing that. Yes, makes sense to me. Okay. It Does it have to be called the complaints? Chain of command. That's really Does it have to be called complaints? <laughs> No, it doesn't. It's good. What can we call it? Even cons even I like concerns better, better than complaints. complaints. You know, I mean, we do have a fourteen. I mean, the fourteen hundred is complaints. We have an overall complaints policy. Right. Um, um, I don't have a problem 
softening that language. I think it still gets across, and, and not everything is a complaint. I mean, people can ask a question because they're concerned about it rather than, you know, I want somebody's head. I mean, that's what a complaint sounds like. You know, let me talk to your, to your boss. That's what a complaint sounds like to me. Uh, yeah, I think, that, uh, I think that's a great resolution, Patrick. I don't want to overwear my welcome or anything, but uh, you're only allowed to do it for the month. So. Yeah, this is good. after this, it's all, it over. all out now. Uh, no, I just I, you mentioned the idea of consistency before, and I think that uh, you know, just thinking policy-wise or programmatically, uh, it, it is important for people to have a clear understanding of where they can go with concerns, and that they're not kind of violating a proper protocol, you know, for kind of bringing concerns to the district or to teachers or to administration. I would say the the one thing. Uh, for me, that really s separated this version of the policy from other versions that I've seen on the island, and, and most districts don't have 1420, but I, I've looked at like Three Village, Smithtown, other, other uh, Port Washington, is that the consistency that's offered isn't only about the practice of where you start and where you go from where you start, but it's about the, the thing that they really anchor to is consistently supporting their curriculum and how it's selected. Mm -hmm. So I think that that's, that's really important in whatever final version the board adopts that that resonate through it. Um, well, why don't, um, I think, uh, uh, I feel comfortable taking a look myself just at a couple of comparable, not comparable, a couple of other school districts and, uh, and seeing what they have on it. Just so before, you know, I think that's fair just to take a look at it, if there's anything that we think uh, would, uh, is helpful or not helpful? Um, we can always go through that. And maybe Rich, can, you mentioned uh, Three Village, Smithtown, mm -hmm. and what other? Uh, the ones I looked at this morning again were Three Village, Smithtown, and Port Washington. Syosset, I don't believe has it. Comac, I couldn't find their policies online, so. Okay. Um, so, so I think it's fair to say the committee's view is take out that sentence about the alternative text. We'll take a look. Uh, we've got plenty of time for that for me. And take a look, see if there's anything that we think is helpful, and uh, then we'll put the, the policy up for the first reading. Okay. okay. Last topic, I just wanted to keep it on the agenda. I know it's come up before, and uh, um, I, I think um, we, we just, just as a continuing goal, is at some point, you know, you know we'll, I know our policies on the website are all the ones that have been adopted since we signed up for the School Board Association service. Um, but then what else is out there that's not on the website? It's a concern because if we're saying, yeah, we put our policies on the website, but not everything's on the website. And I know that's a function, or at least somebody had said last time, that's a function of the program that we used. Uh, it was a decision of the Board of Education, as oh, really? well as a function of the time. The, to the original uh, recommendation from school boards was wait until the completion of the policy manual. The Board of Education decided once there was more than a, you know, yeah. once you had a critical mass of policies sure. done, to push out that information to the public sooner rather than later. Okay. But this is a project then that doesn't have an end date, you know, I'm a... uh, Well, in a sense it does because we, you know, we're hoping to get to that position where all we're doing is the quarterly right. uh, updates. Um, you know, we get policy. No, we just, uh, Roseanne, maybe you could share what yeah, we, we got from school boards. Yes, I spoke to our contact at school boards. Um, she's working on the um, 5,000 policies, which are students, um, the 7,000s, which is building and grounds, and the 8,000s, which is support services. I'm sorry, one more time. 5,000s? 5,000s relate to students. Yep. 7,000s relate to buildings and grounds, and the 8,000s relate to support services. She's working on that now, and we should get that in a couple of weeks. Okay, so, and I don't mean this as criticism, in the past, but we were sort of behind with a lot of this stuff. Not starting the, like the beginning of this school year, I just mean it sounds like we had a lot of updating to do at some point. Oh, we Our absolutely goal was did. to update yes. the, whole the entire, entire policy manual. Well, yeah, no. we have over 600 policies in the book. Right. So, so yeah. she's working on those now, and then also in the two other sections, 6,000s are the finance sections, and the 9,000s are personnel. 
and she's going to get that to us hopefully the middle of January. Just so I understand, because uh, I, I didn't really understand, um, how long have we been sort of trying to update this whole thing? At least we three. began with Mrs. Bettinas as, I began oh. with Mrs. Bettinas as the, when the first time we went to school boards, so obviously we did policy, I mean I've been doing policy yes. for 11 years, I did it with Constant. Mrs. Greenspan, right. And then, and we used to, we didn't have the the service. Which right, is how sure. Things got far behind. Yeah, so okay. Oh, it's so when did we sign up for the service? Four years. Okay. Has it been that? The long only reason I said it is because well, if I, if I did it with. It, we started with Janine. We did it with. I'm just trying to think of chair people. We did. Yeah. Janine, then Eric. I think yeah, I think a year with Janine, two years with. Eric, one year with Paul, and this is our right. that sound right. right? That does sound right, yes. <laughs> okay, so, that. Uh, and the reason I say it is then, because if we have this thing where we're saying, all right, well, you know, we'll do it at the end, but if the end is far away, then I'm concerned how we are maintaining everything, because uh, having policies and not putting them all up or making them all available, do we, I, I think then at a minimum, we, w we should have a master policy book, um, one for you, which is, I know you can say. Uh, I have one. Huge, and then, huge yeah, I know, but until we get it on the yeah. all on the web, right. I think maybe we should also have uh, another one available at the board meeting uh, in case we need it or it never comes up. Because okay. um, to me, I wouldn't know by going on our website that you know, there's all this stuff out there that's not there. So let's. Um, I guess we just got a lot of work to do. Once they get it to us, mm -hmm. we'll turn them around. And yeah. I mean, you can see how it takes, you know, we're, like, we're going on four months for these two policies. Yeah, they take forever. To do 600. It's tedious. <laughs> no, I know. Right. But I'm saying if they got me 50, yeah. we'll do 50 in one meeting. I mean, you know, it'll be a long meeting, well, I don't know, but, but they're so not getting it to us. just tweak because, I mean, some policies are right, like, of from course. the 70s. Mm -hmm. Okay. But at this point in time, We've done everything. We've, we have given. now, the committee has now reviewed everything school boards has given yes. us. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Yes. So. Because right. here, here's like, um, like, I was at the nutrition meeting two months ago, and somebody was saying something about the policy, the wellness policy. But that policy is under, it's not on, I mean, I couldn't find it on our board web, where our policies are. It's under, like, the breakfast and lunch section. So how would somebody know to look under that section to find the wellness policy? Well, you're right, that's why I think now, the we wellness want to do the policy should, should be, be on there. House. The wellness policy was reviewed. We reviewed it with the changes to yes, the, to the law. Yes, on, online. They are mistaken, I don't have it with me, but there was something that people couldn't find. Uh, could potentially the food allergies. Maybe that's a policy. And it, and it was not under our policies, but it was under the breakfast and lunch menu. Okay, so I guess we need to put that. The in. concern was to not um, move forward with something we hadn't that the board hadn't reviewed. You know, it was we, what's what is the you know the, you've got competing interests is, is the most important thing fast access is the most most important thing a thorough review by the, the board of education um, having one searchable you know I, I think as it would stand if you were going to have all the other policies. You know, some districts do a massive PDF document that's hundreds of pages long, which to me seems like you're saying we've got good access for you, but, <laughs> you know, how do you find things in there? Um, some school districts that I'm aware of would take a po the policy manual from school boards and adopt it in one motion. Without reviewing each policy. Yeah, which, I don't think that's good practice either. I, I think we're getting close if they're going to get us all of those things and the so committee is con committed to meeting monthly and really churning through. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. I, okay. I just think so we good. keep plowing okay. through. So then the, the long range goal would be, and, and, and you pulled one up here, I know like we talked about it before, putting them on, a web, on our website in an easy to read manner. I know I had referenced Manhasset that I saw was good. I've seen some other good ones. Um, do we just talk to the school board association helping department, whatever? Yeah, no. they, they, yeah, we don't actually put it on our website. We, when we so go, we, we link okay. to them. Yeah. So okay. I, I think if we, I mean, if we had suggestions that it would be easier. If, I've gotten used to it through the years, but it, at 
times where you, you, you click that down and you search yeah. a word and it tells you everything that's there. Yeah, it's it, it's, right. it can, okay. I know what I'm looking for most times and it can be cumbersome. Mm -hmm. so, so, so that will be a long range goal. Maybe by the end of the year, not this year, I mean school year, that we can sort of be moving towards, uh, because I can't imagine anything, we just did, redid our farm website, it took months, I can't imagine doing this would be a quick project, but maybe we can have that a goal to make some progress by the end of the school year on how to get it more user friendly. Um, I think we should start the, making then suggestions yeah. to them. Just that very broad, you know, we have yeah. concern, you know, we're paying for this e policy service. It's not as user friendly as we'd like it. What is School Boards Association doing to make it more? Yeah. Just as customers, and, and, and I would, for right. service. Uh, absolutely, and I would ask yeah, them to the please. Department. I would ask Concern them. To, I would ask them. <laughs> <laughs> we don't make complaints. I would ask them to uh, take a look at the Manhasset uh, School District website because I, I just think it's very easy to follow. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah, if we could, yeah, but if it's something long term we might want to think about too, or, or even short term, um, you could have an entire searchable manual of everything that the average parent is never going to look for. And you could, we could also start to think about and consider what are the almost frequently asked policies um, for, for parents and students and, and employees. So employees, maybe we you know, make a, a link separate from the e-policy tool to okay. things like FMLA, sexual harassment, non-discrimination for student code of conduct, wellness, food allergies. So we could we could probably if we took a little bit of time and said, okay, what are the what are the ones that we get a lot of questions about that, that folks would be thinking and make those even easier to find. I mean you put those on the website mm -hmm. tab, uh, you know select me be beyond it. It's select, it's not all, but you know, select student policies, okay. select employee policies. Um, you know Select. You know, I've seen some districts who on the Board of Education page yeah. would put a link to 1230 because that's there. We could so we could highlight some things too, rather than putting everything into a perfectly searchable 600 policy. I, I, I actually called the district oh. clerk in Manhasset okay. um, and asked them how they handle putting their policies up. Um, the district clerk is actually the webmaster there. They receive the quarterly updates through NISBA. Uh, it goes for review to the policy committee. Um, they have a custom-made application. They don't use the e-policy. The, the e policy. Uh, the custom-made application is through School Wires Company. Uh, that was through Nassau Boses and um, actually Blackboard bought School Wires. Yeah. Oh, say Blackboard. Yeah. Okay. So, so it just got more expensive. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so it's a completely different system than what so we're So Blackboard, using. their whole website is the Blackboard base? Uh, I don't know if the whole website is. I don't know how that works. Could, but could, yeah, I don't either. Could the, we find out if there is um, just the price just for this uh, thing? Did I ask her? Uh, let's see. Um, I don't think I asked her how, how much it okay. costs, but... Um, yeah, maybe if we could just... I mean, or, or I'm on their website right now. Their entire website is run by Blackboard. Okay. So, so this is like a... Uh, so that's just like... Who runs our website? Final site. Final site. Okay. I get it. I mean, they have a section also, which is, you know, for policies under review, latest policy revisions. What's our contract with final site? Not the... I expect you to know that. Sorry. In terms of cost or in sir. terms of uh, length of. <laughs> yes, I All right. So you know what? Um, well, the other question is, mm -hmm. if we choose to make any changes, can we take that component out of our contract mm -hmm. with school boards and then take, you know, take those funds? Yeah. I don't know how long it, our contract is. I think, with, but I think uh, it seems it seems to me like the problem. Oh, the problem. But it, it seems weird. to me like. It was an Final site is presenting yeah, our information a certain way, yeah. and Blackboard yes, is presenting another yes. way. Maybe we can contact Final Site and say, "We have a contract with you." Well, Final Site's not. Yeah, we would have to. We, we haven't asked Final Site. Right. To do it. That's Final Site right now is not doing it. Right. It's e policy. Okay. So. So. Oh, I see. All right. Yeah. We don't. We just link. When you click on our piece, you you go to an external site. Right. We we. 
We make it look like it's ours, but it's... Mm -hmm. It's more user-friendly. Um, so maybe we can talk to Final Sight and see what the cost would be. I'm sure they wouldn't want to lose our contract. I don't know if there'd be a cost. I think we'd do it. We would we just would put up, you know... But they would set it up MIS for us. us. Uh, no, I mean, no. if it's just a it just PDF be, or, or some yeah, sort of it reader, we would do it. As they get approved. Yeah, and we link PDFs, code of conduct, uh, course offerings, okay. things like that now. You know, why don't we try some of those policies? Let me, let me take a, just a few that we okay. code of conduct, wellness, some of the ones that we, we do often, and let Joe Lynn's department say, well, if you were going to do this, what would it, let's see yeah, what it would look great. like. If okay. we, and we do a handful this way, we can get a feel of, you know, would it ultimately meet our need before we do it with 600? Yeah, maybe like a test, a test run with a couple. Yeah, on a few, you know, we know what the yeah most common I agree. policies are. Okay. okay, so that's that's good. So you'll talk you internally. We'll put some of that together. Yeah. And if we like that, then maybe we can sort of expand on it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I, I think maybe that's the middle ground. These are the yeah. common policies, and then we put a disclaimer for all policies. See this. Go search the art. Right, or if we really like it, then we can eventually. Yeah, okay. Right, I'm not looking to say it's got to be done, but in a long-term project that goes back so many years, you know, at some point, like I always feel like there's no sort of deadline in place. Yeah, it, it does. It takes a long time. Okay. With that, I think we've dealt with everything. Um, we want to pick another meeting we can do it afterwards, but we're done right now. Good. Okay. Are we ready for December 14th? Thanks, everybody. Thanks. Thank you all for the opportunity to come today. Next December 14th. So next, so we are like, we kind of have a few weeks until we get. So I don't know if we should. We should wait for that before we meet again. What's that? After, uh, she said after in a few board. weeks we're going to get a big right. influx from the school board association. Um, yeah, I don't think we have anything unless, like, if this stuff comes out. I mean, if this stuff, if you put it in final form and then we we vote on it uh, on the fourteenth. I don't think there's anything for us to do before the fourteenth. No, I don't no. think so either. And then we run into Christmas time anyway. So why don't we look when the January meeting is, and then pick something before that. Uh, January meeting is January 11. They're all going to come quick. No, this is when the year If you want, we can maybe meet. Well, why don't we want? You want to meet the week of the fourth? Is there? Yeah. I think especially if we get the the, the influx that they, they kind of promised to Roseanne. I'm not here. Oh, okay. And I'm away the week before. So, all right. Look, I, we aim to meet every month, but holiday time is holiday time. So, well, we can do it by January, right? Yeah. Well, we can yeah. Yeah. yeah, so so we're not going to most likely have anything new policies for the January 11th meeting, which is not the end of the world. So let's pick a January date that works. I'm out of town the end of the month. Um, we'll still be doing a second reading on January 11th, so there will be there will be policy work presented. You want to pick January 11th? The board meeting. No, well, I'm saying what? Well, that morning. Meet. Have a policy meeting. Yeah. Now, yeah, we're usually capped because if we may put days with board meetings. Kelly usually has me in by 9:30. So at night, 8 to 9:30, I'd, I'd be fine. Oh, okay. I, yeah. Look. The eight o'clock thing is only because, like, right now I have something to go to. I feel like it doesn't matter to me generally. I mean, I wouldn't have a problem meeting in the afternoon if you want to do that one day. I mean, if we have the night meeting, yeah, sometimes anyway, we met right before the. We could do that. Meeting, if you want to whatever. do that? That's fine. Okay, so why don't we say the eleventh at? And Patrick, Six you're the one who's got the full day. Yeah. So it's five. Not the right five time. Let's say five, just in case we get the influx of a lot of policy to give us a little bit of time. You want to meet here and then travel over to Otsego or try to secure oh, uh, the spot at Otsego? We should probably meet here. Be here? Okay. Yeah, let's meet here. Okay. 
Okay. That's it. Five to six thirty, and then we'll head. Thank you, everybody. Or is it you, you'll book the...